Hey YouTube, I uh, wanted to talk about how to mount a rifle scope today. And we have a loophole Mark VI. It's already, uh, it's already been mounted in these rings. Uh, it's a Geisley mount. And right now it's sitting on a Badger dead level is the name of this device here. It's what I use to level all of my scopes. And I found it to be extremely effective for that. Um, the first thing to do after putting the scope in it or on it is to put that bubble in the center of that ring which it appears to have drifted a little bit to the left there we go brought it back center alright anyway that's our little setup right there and the other part of our setup the other part of this puzzle is hanging right there. That's a plumb line. And that is our that is our true vertical line that we're going to be basing our reticle off of. And I've already leveled the scope, of course, cuz it is mounted. But I want to show you what that looks like. See there, we are, it is dead on, left and right. Another cool trick, you can't really see that plumb line through that scope very well um, with, with this smartphone. It's not, not the best. Anyway, I've cut the light out and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, this is pretty cool. This is a trick that someone on one of the forums told me about. And if you're wanting a little more visual assistance lining up your crosshairs here uh, with your plumb line, run a flashlight through your scope. That'll project your crosshairs on the wall and you can see that that plumb line runs straight down the middle of them. I'm going to move the scope off center a little bit so that you can see the plumb line not hiding behind the crosshairs. There you go. I see our plumb line to the right of the crosshairs that was it was previously hiding behind them because it's perfectly lined up. Anyway, this projection method is pretty cool. It allows you to, um, for lack of a better term, it allows you to eat more easily tweak the rotation of your optic and the rings until you've got it exactly how you want it. And that's kind of what I wanted to show you today is um, this little tip, trick, technique. Uh, a lot of people think that that's being OCD, that it's taking it to an extreme, that it's it doesn't matter. Well, for the average deer hunter who's going to shoot 50 to 100 yards, you're right, it doesn't. Uh, but if you have six degrees of cant um, on a 300 Win Mag, and you are shooting at a thousand yards that's going to be magnified greatly. Six degrees of cant is roughly one minute on a clock face. One minute. So if you have one minute on a clock face of cant, at a hundred yards it will be off on your windage by one inch, one MOA. That's minuscule. Most people, most hunting rifles, cannot shoot a one MOA ten shot group. It, it gets lost in the details. When you stretch that out to a thousand yards, it becomes roughly 28 inches of error. That's not accounting for wind. 28 inches of error is enough to miss by several times over a standard Ipsic steel plate target. 
and if you are careless in mounting your optics and you plan to do any kind of long distance shooting uh, you will be chasing wind on a zero wind day when you start reaching out past 600 yards if you do not have this reticle level whether you're dialing, whether you're using the BDC in the scope or whatever you're doing you're going to be very frustrated and that's going to be why that's why I place such emphasis on getting these crosshairs absolutely level and this is just a tool set and the tricks that I use to achieve that um, everybody kinda has their own zen and their own way of doing it but that's mine